Hi all, I'm Tanvi Fernando, conducting a PhD in Bioinformatics at the University of Guelph. Today I'm presenting my research, Build a Large Phylogenetic Trace by Blessing DNA Barcode Sequences using the example from Ray Finn Fishers. First, I'll walk through by describing the biological problems that leads to conduct my research study. As we all know, biodiversity is the foundation of ecosystem services which is essential to sustain agriculture and humanity. So, maintenance of biodiversity is vital for ecological stability and sustainable production of food and agricultural products, influencing food security nutrition and livelihoods. Nowadays, most of the farmers struggle to control invasive species like weeds, pests and pathogens that can harm their crop production and farmed animals. But with the knowledge of biodiversity in a given system, it's possible to improve resistance to invasive species and resilience of that system. According to recent studies, 98% of tropical species in novel study regions are yet to be published in reference databases like NCBI and BALB. That means almost all data are missing from reference databases. Therefore, there should be an approach for taxonomic and functional annotation of novel DNA sequences even in the absence of species level match in reference databases. DNA barcoding, phylogenomic and multigene are some approaches for phylogenetic placement and for phylogenetic tree building. As these approaches have strengths as well as weaknesses, we have a great chance to combine these approaches together. So, for that first we need to generate a phylogenetic tree using multigene sequences. And then I place DNA barcode in sequences which represent by these leaves on the generated backbone tree in order to find the optimal position for new query species. The goal of this research is to develop combined approach of multigene and placing DNA barcode reads on backbone trees to determine how novel sequences fit into the evolutionary context. In this talk, I specifically address the objective, assess the proportion of species coverage required in the backbone tree in order to generate a reliable final tree using Fishers as the target taxon. For this study, I've used Fish Tree of Life dataset as it consists of 12k species with 27 genes from several sources like Bold, Raboski, and Nia. Let's move on to detailed workflow. First, I've generated 100% complete backbone tree using full multigene Fish Tree of Life dataset and kept this tree aside for downstream analysis. Then I've built different level backbone trees with random samples at 80%, 60%, 40%, and 20%. As the next step, I've added the missing species back into each level backbone tree based on core one data. And finally, I've plotted the completeness of the backbone tree against several metrics of phylogenetic concordance and topological distance. There, I've calculated the phylogenetic concordance by comparing metrics generated using each sampling level's backbone tree to the 100% reference tree. Here, I've repeated the same procedure 10 times in order to obtain replicates of different levels of sampling completeness in the backbone trees. I've used multiple metrics in this project to explore different components of phylogenetic accuracy. Robinson fall metric and path distance come under topology-based methods, while CADM comes under distance-based methods. Then, I've analyzed the results for each metric using a statistical test. Here, I compared the measures of phylogenetic accuracy, the response variable across the levels of sampling completeness, which is the predictor variable using repeated measures ANOVA. 
The reason for the selection of repeated meshes approach is the sequential data dropping technique because the species included in each level of sampling completeness were not random for each resampling run. Also, I applied the statistical technique called repeated meshes correlation to determine the overall within individual association among paired meshes. Okay, so far I've described the methodology and here onwards I'm presenting the results of the statistical tests. These graphical representations of matrix show the linkages among points at each varying levels of sampling completeness. By looking at the trends of the plots with different level backbone trees, which means the sampling completeness on the x-axis and phylogenetic accuracy on the y-axis, we can compare the difference between topology-based methods and distance-based methods. Different colored lines in these plots represent replicates. Further, you can see that the accuracy increases when the sampling completeness is increasing in Robinson fall metric and path distance, while congruence among distance matrices has no difference in accuracy with the sampling completeness. I was able to prove this results using statistical test too. According to the values of repeated meshes ANOVA, Robinson fold metric and path distance have statistically significant difference in phylogenetic accuracy at each level backbone tree, as the p values are less than 0 0.05, while CADM has no significant difference due to the greater p value. When it comes to the repeated measures correlation values, there is a strong correlation within individual groups of Robinson fall metric and path distance, while CADM has no correlation as the value is closer to zero. By considering all the outcomes, we can conclude that topological accuracy strongly relates to the backbone completeness while distance-based methods have no significant difference in accuracy when the sampling completeness is increasing. So, if the purpose of the future research is taxonomic revision, then topological accuracy is important as the accuracy strongly relates to the sampling completeness. But if the purpose of the future research is finding a large-scale tree properties and diversity, then distance matrices are important as there is no significant difference in accuracy when the completeness of sampling increases. Ultimately, this work will help other researchers to build large trees to study phylogenetic diversity and predicting species traits in agricultural biomonitoring. This study also will contribute to early detection of potential pests and other non-native species while capitalizing upon the large data sets being generated from understudied habitats and regions of the world. Okay, you guys have now learned about the proportion of species coverage required in the backbone tree in order to generate a reliable final tree. So, I want you to think of these backbone proportions depending on the purpose of your research. Thank you for listening.